Ladies and gentlemen, hey, welcome to War Room Mastery. I've recorded this very quick impromptu Facebook Live for you guys out there because you've been amazing. And I've just finished up doing a bit of teaching. Got my awesome whiteboard, which I love to use because frameworks are a big way I like to break down the complex nature of dancing and to help you out. And I had a lot of people, over a hundred questions submitted to me recently about how you can become a better ballroom or Latin dancer. And a massive amount of those questions were about how do I practice if I'm a solo uh, dance person at the moment, you know, working with a pro-am coach or waiting for a partner to come, um, or a couple who, how do I improve my dancing uh, individually? Because I know if I'm better, then we'll be better as a partnership. And then of course, how do I practice effectively as a couple? Because we're different personalities. Now, this is really going to be high level strategies that you can deploy at the most basic level to the highest professional level. These are what got me and Alison from raw beginners with two left feet to the highest grade in Australia, the open amateur grade, within five years in three dance styles, Borum Latin and Uvoke. We did not have innate talent. We weren't better than the next person in the beginning. We just wanted to dance, but we deployed a framework very early on uh, if you saw some of my recent Facebook episodes, they were about a dance plan. We would come up with a strategic way of how we're going to improve our dancing because here is the problem that you're probably in right now. You turn up to the studio, you have no idea how to practice properly, right? So going through your routine is like, it's for amateurs. Like that is the basic way and unfortunately, it's the way most people think that they practice like to get better. It is the worst way to get better. Hear me right. You practicing your routine day in and day out is the worst way for you to get better. The reason for that is you might be training in bad habits or you might be ineffectively practicing. So the framework I'm about to go through here, these seven steps uh, to practice, they are going on some research uh, that happened in the early 70s, uh, basically about why talent is overrated. And the short of it is this, the best violinists in the world were the best because, and what separated them from the good or the better, the very best were best because they did deliberate practice. There was a certain way they practiced that the others did not. So at most amateurs in the violin world, for example, or most hobbyists would practice playing a song. They'll play a couple of chords, they'll play the song though. Whereas these guys would, would play one chord until their fingers bled, right? Like they would be hitting this one note, boom, boom, every day for hours, just methodically trying to master one thing. So this framework works very, very well if you are focusing on one single principle. So I, on this side, essentially, we've got our tips, we've got our three ways to practice, then we've got the seven step framework we're about to go through. Now, what's not on here is something I'll add quickly, quickly right for you. And essentially, it's understanding the layers of dancing. We have what we call technique, which you all learn when you first start. You have your mechanics, and you have expression, and music. Now, technique is footwork alignment, CBM, sway, anything in ballroom dancing you learn from the grey book. From the red books or the Walter Laird technique, it could be uh, positions, lead and follow, uh, amount of turn, etc. That's technique. All right, how we learn our steps when we first begin. Mechanics is like the body. How does our body move in time and space? How do we use more energy or less energy for a figure? What part of the body is being used? The muscles, right? The structure of the body, the posture. So it's how we move the technique essentially. Now within mechanics, we have principles. So principles are like weight or time or space or energy. And they're, they're a little bit higher level because you have to have a very solid grounding in your technique. You have to be able to control your feet. You have to have foot speed. You have to understand the timing of dance and do the steps of the dance. So we're not going to be talking about principles today. For you, you could use techniques. So if you're a beginner dancer, this will be perfect for you because you can be like, I'm going to use my footwork for this seven step framework. Or if you're a, an advanced dancer and someone who does high level competitions, for you to get mastery, you want to master your principles. It might be weight for you, it might be balance, posture, it might be uh, time or energy like we said before. So essentially that's what principles are. But we want to use one because in deliberate practice, if we focus on one, we're actually going to develop a whole bunch of other skills we didn't even know we needed to develop as we're focusing on one. Because the worst thing you can do is come into practice and practice timing, footwork, posture, partnering, lead and follow, hey floor craft, don't forget about the routine and get all of that to work in one hit. It just doesn't happen and that's why most people feel really overwhelmed. Now, if you're liking this so far, give me a little like, comment or shout out below because this is going to help you tremendously. So let's break into it. Here's how it's going to work. Take some notes, get yourself a coffee. This might be a bit long. But on the um, right hand side here, the first one is 
when you turn up to the studio is not to launch into your routine or even basic steps. It's called a loose warm-up. Now, this is why it's important. A loose warm-up is not movement of the routine or the dance you're focusing on. It's actually literally just moving the body. It's stretching it. It's basically getting the body to get blood into the muscles. That's the most important thing. Uh, light jog is important, getting a light sweat, but moving the body in time and space, right? Just letting your body do any type of movement, no matter how ridiculous it feels, turns, spins, lunges, right? Ripples. It doesn't matter how it feels. What matters is opening the body because your body needs to be receptive for new information to go in. Most people are inept at doing this and getting their body ready. So when they go to actually dance, they're off balance and they're like, why am I off balance? The reason is they have not opened their body and made it receptive to the new skill and information. You want to do that as soon as you get in without anyone holding your hand, without anyone touching you, just a couple of minutes, get your body loose and open. It feels great, do it. Second thing is here, a simple drill. Now, I am in the process of putting together a new program for you guys. Um, and I want you to understand that I'll help you with understanding what these drills can look like in each dance. So in ballroom, all the five dances. In Latin, all the five dances. I have specific drills that I know work really effectively at mastering the whole dance, right? So most people don't realize this, but if you master your walks and your locks in cha-cha and your chasses, those three elements, you're gonna be very good in your cha-cha because the whole dance is made of those, right? Um, and then you can go more advanced and get good at spins and pivots and rotations and other trick steps. But the simple drill, for example, might be swip one up to the pink locks. Very basic. And walks. That's the simple drill. Back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. Now, what is really, really important when you do this, and I'm gonna to allude to this on this side, the three ways that you practice, I don't even have my green pen, so I'm gonna to have to like, you, I think of pens here. Um, Three ways to practice when you're doing this. One is no music. Now this is, again, where most people fall down in this area because no music is very easy to do because you're in control, right? You, you can monitor the speed and sort of get away with a bit of bullshit, right? Like if you're off balance and like, you, you know, you can just slow yourself down, I'm good now. But when we hit the next one, which is slow music, now we're on the hook for something. Now we have to make sure we stay with the rhythm because slow music is about putting slow technique to a constant rhythmical count so you can start to balance out where you're falling down, what needs to improve. Once you get slow music, you then move into full tempo. Full tempo, tempo means speed of music. Full tempo is vital, Now I'll tell you why. Your body is wired with muscles and nerves, right? That come from the brain. Now, the brain is telling, sending signals down to do a movement. You're, you won't be coordinated in the beginning part. Again, there was a video I talked about the different stages of learning. To get to an unconscious competency where you do it without thinking takes a lot of skill, a lot of practice, right? But this is how you do it. You do it, you're training and sending a signal into your nervous system to move into a different area of coordination you're not used to. Now, when you do slow music, or worse yet, no music, you're not really pushing the boundaries. You're not forcing the body to grow rapidly. When you do it full on, full speed, what you actually force your body to do is to respond with growth, right? That's the resistance. Here is the problem. Most people focus only on no music or slow music or only on full music. There's no middle ground. This framework is about understanding the layers of how you improve and compound it to save years and years of learning. What happens is you do no music for a certain point on a simple drill, slow music on a certain point, or a simple principle for um, the simple drill, and then you do full tempo for the simple drill. And what, what is so vital about understanding that is that when you dance with no music, you're gonna move at a certain way and a certain speed. When you do it to slow music, your body is actually gonna move differently. When you do it to full music, it's gonna probably go out the frickin' window and be just terrible, right? That's what happens to all of us. The way we dance slowly versus the way we dance to full tempo is always different. Our job is to close the gap, right? We have to deploy the principle we're mastering at full speed, that's our goal. The reason is so we feel in control and we actually love our dancing and we feel in control of our movement. So when we're practicing no music, slow music and full tempo, that is always gonna be in play on these seven, seven steps. So keep coming with me. We now move from a loose warm up to our simple drill, i.e. locks and walks. Now we move into our advanced drill. And now, an advanced drill so for example, that might be a step that incorporates uh, checked turns, turning three steps, whatever for you is going to be a 
difficult next step. It might be uh, continuous spins. It might, it's going to be something that's gonna challenge you. It's you've gotta be unique to you. I'm not working with you one-on-one -on -one right now, so I don't know what that is, because we have to assess your technical ability and how much control you have. But advanced drill, for example, in cha-cha, could be uh, continuous locks, a spot turn, maybe you do a spin after it, a big ronde into Cuban breaks. Could be something that's very advanced in that sense. But you do it with no music, slow music, then full tempo. And you'll notice as you drill that, you're gonna have different challenges at different speeds. And our goal is to make it the same over any speed, right? You're following me. So let me know how this is syncing with you at the moment and if you have any questions. Now here's where we get into the next stage of this sort of practice, right? We've turned up to the studio, we've loose warmed up, we've done a simple drill, an advanced drill, 15, 20, 30 minutes might have gone by now. We have not done our routine. You see the difference already. Now we move into your simple choreography. Let's say, you have a very, whatever your most basic part of your routine is, the easiest part is the simple choreography. Now within that simple choreography, what are you doing? Well, the same thing we started this whole lesson on. One principle, one simple principle. That's all you're responsible for. That principle could be technique, could be your footwork, it could be your timing, it could be your posture. It could be a lead and follow if you're more advanced, right? It could be um, creating more foot speed, floor pressure. Whatever it is for you, it's that one thing, and that's the discipline, because it's easy to try to do a lot of things in that simple choreography. Now, I know I used to turn up to the studio with Alison, and I'd be like, all right, all right, we'd have this framework, I'm like, let's go. Today, we're gonna focus on posture, sweet. So we'd get in there, I'd get ready, we'd done all this, we, we, we'd go back through it together, I'd take a hand, here we go. And I'd be like, boom, 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 I'm off time, crap. And I'd be like, okay. I'd be like, Alison, you're, you're off time. She's like, Vaughn, shut up, we're talking, we're doing posture today. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, all right. So we still have to be aware of the other things, but we have to be focusing in on mastery of one principle. So you're probably relating to how frustrating that can be sometimes, because it is important being on time. It is important having those other things in play, but we cannot focus on other things. If we're, uh, uh, what's the saying? Uh, if we focus on too many things, we don't master anything. We'll be a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? We don't want to be that in dancing. Now, once we've done a simple choreography, we move to our advanced choreography. All right, whatever the hardest part is for you, if you're doing ballroom dancing, that's going to be spins, pivots, and rotations. It's gonna be things that require, like full reverse slip pivot, double reverse spins, into line figures and out of line figures. That is advanced choreography, right? Now, the trick is with both of these, hear this. You're doing it to no music, slow music, and full tempo. You're also only picking one section. One section, say it with me now. Write it down below, one section, y'all, because most people screw this up, they come in, first thing they do is take hold, they haven't even warmed up, take hold, let's do the whole routine. Are you crazy? Why would you do that? You are reinforcing bad habits and your body's not even receptive to new information. Your lead will be terrible, guys, if you do that. It's not gonna work. And then guess what happens, this happened to me. We go on a downward spiral of shittiness, right? Like I'd come in, hold, ah, off we go dance. Why isn't it like yesterday's amazing practice or the comp on the weekend? Oh, uh, cause you warmed up, dude. <laughs> and, and then I'd get like shitty with Alice and be like, oh, we're not dancing well. You're not dancing well, I should say. You know, these, these are the common problems we have when we first learn, right? So we have done five steps and we have not gone through your entire routine yet. Can you understand how important and powerful this can be? If you can get it, it's really gonna change your dancing because you're doing all of this, no music, slow music, full tempo to one principle, okay? Now, then we get into six and seven. Here is where it changes. Stamina practice is something we learned in England and it's so intense, but it's amazing. Your goal is to dance to one whole song, not a minute 20 or 30 or 40, one full song. So imagine doing an entire samba song and you're trying to do it with that one principle in mind the whole way through. Now at this point, you can include your partner or you can do it by yourself. If you have no partner, this is perfect, right? Because your body's gonna, you're gonna be ripped, you'll be better than any gym program. Once you get through that, you do one after the other. So you maybe, if you've got five routines that you're working on, you do all five in a row. Here's the thing, if you make one mistake, you start again. It's a fucking killer, <laughs> it's a killer, right? <laughs> I think I should just swear. It is murderous, because you get third dance deep, and you have a little spat, because one of you's off time, or whatever, you start again, right? It will murder you, I trust, but trust me, it is so good at ha ramping up your ability to dance. Unfortunately, this is why I focus so much on mindset, because if you have negative self-talk, if you don't understand how you operate, how you think, when you stop, and you start again, you're probably gonna keep stopping and starting because that habit is wired and it's the way you're talking to yourself on the inside. So this is a strategy, 
But this strategy will never work if you don't get your psychology right to begin with, especially your communication. Now, if we go to step seven, and we've gone through these six, seven is something you can do after stamina practice or in lieu of stamina practice or as a separate practice, right? Performance rehearsals literally means you set up your practice session like a comp. You dress in the gear for a comp. You do a minute to two, a minute 30 to two minutes of your dance with exit and entry and you walk between. Again, no mistakes, so you start again. And that's your rehearsal. Performance rehearsal, again, this is what everybody thinks practice means. It means to turn up and just do your routine to music. That is so dumb. Don't do that. It's so much slower to improve. You probably think this is overwhelming. I'm not sure. Let me know what you feel right now. You might think, man, that's a lot to do. It actually isn't. It should simplify the way you think about your dancing because what happens is by being a master of something simple and then doing something in the advanced way, focusing on one principle or one technical aspect improves you faster over time than turning up day in and day out. How do I know this? I've experimented on myself. I've taught hundreds and hundreds of couples. I, have, I might be young, but we've been focusing and doing this since I was like uh, 18 years old, so 34, so a long time, right? Um, but it's because I've been thinking about it as much as possible and talking to the best of the world, watching the best. I've seen people who have danced for 20 years who aren't really good, and they think they're good, and they're like, you could be so much better. I've been dancing less than you, but I've accomplished more. Why? You might say it's age. It's not age. I know people who are 20 who aren't very good at dancing, and I've seen them for five years. They're still not very good. The reason is, is not doing it every single day. It's how they do it, right? It's not just turning up to a class that matters. It's not the amount of private lessons you do. It is absolutely the way you input this information physically into your body and program it so it becomes automatic. Now remember, as you're going through this, we're focusing on one principle. Loose warm-up, simple drill, advanced drill. Simple choreography, advanced choreography, then stamina practice, and then performance rehearsal. How much time do you dedicate to this? This is the winning formula. As much as you allocate. If you go an hour, then this might be, let's put it on this side here, this loose warm up might be five minutes. You might do a simple drill for five minutes, advanced drill for five minutes, simple choreography for 10, advanced choreography for 20. So that's 20, 30, 40, 45. There, that's 45 minutes. Stamina practice can be 15 minutes and you're out. One hour will equal at most three hours of other people's training. And then you're out. I remember interviewing Jeffrey Hearn. If you don't know who Jeffrey Hearn is, this guy is like one of the most amazing legends of the sport in dancing. We lost him, I think, a couple of years ago now. But I did an interview with him when I set up DSI London uh, TV, the streaming service for dance sport. Um, that's something I ended up co-founding and uh, brought that to the dance sport world. And I remember interviewing Jeffrey. And unfortunately, we don't have the interview anymore, which is a real shame. But I remember him saying, most people do not know how to practice. They waste their time. They come in the studio for three hours and think they've practiced for three hours when in reality, they've only done 45 minutes of actual training. And he said, and they've wasted two hours and 15 minutes of their time elsewhere where they could have been at home or something else. You don't need to go into the studio longer. You need to be smarter with your time. And so if you break it up like this, I can promise you, try this for 30 days and tell me how you feel at the end of it. I guarantee you're gonna be better. I know you're gonna feel more confident, which makes you competent in your dancing. And that's the gap in dancing. People are like, how do I get better? How do I get more confident? Uh, you increase your competency, right? You get more skills, you get better balance, you get better coordination, you get more control. When you get those pillars, your confidence has to go up. It doesn't go the other way, it goes in, um, it goes in uh, t what's it called, uh, parallel to competency. So let's just reiterate this. We've got one principle, we're doing this seven steps, but no music, slow music, full tempo, and you govern how much of this you do. You do the 80-20 rule as the final thing. If you say to me, okay, I'm, uh, you identify, it's called the Pareto principle, 20% of your, uh, your efforts equal 80% of your outcome, right? That's what we want. Not 80% of your efforts equal 20%. So if you train, like I said, with three hours and you only do 45 minutes, you're doing 80-20 the wrong way. This is 20% and it will give you 80% yield. It will make you better in shorter periods of time. One last thing, our coach Anne Gleave, fantastic woman, beautiful woman, world champion in uh, England. She told Alison and I, it's probably the biggest compliment I've ever received in dancing. She said, you guys have improved more in 18 months than anyone I have taught in the last, in, in, you've done five years worth of work in that 18 month period. And because of that, your improvement, and she wasn't saying we were better than the world champions and the legends she's teaching. 
She said our rate of improvement was the fastest. And the reason for that is because I do these sort of frameworks. So I hope this has been of value to you. Uh, I think it's gonna be something that's really gonna change your entire perception of dancing. It's gonna really help you break through a lot of your own barriers. But you have to be disciplined. And remember, it's psychology versus strategy. You've gotta see how this can work in your dancing. You have to be disciplined to try it. Give yourself 30 days. Take the seven steps, write them out, and then focus on your own exercises and drills. If you like this, give me a little boom or shout out below. Let me know and I'll make more content like this. This is Vaughn. I hope my sound has been on. I really look forward to seeing you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep following this page for more insights, tips, and tricks on how to master your dancing. See you guys later.